Hey guys, um, we are going to be doing uh, You Can't Go Wrong with the Right Triangle Lab, Module 1. And this is um, Check Your Learning, okay? You already did the module, or Step 2, I mean, um, yesterday. So now we're going to do the Check Your Learning. So this is about, again, complementary angles and um, how they deal with trigonometry. So um, here says the suspension cables at the front of the bridge form not just any triangle, but they form a right triangle, okay? The cable, which is the hypotenuse, is 125 feet long, and the height of the triangle is 50 feet. And let X, it says, be the angle that the cable measures with the base of the bridge. So the X is right there. So, um... Again, what they want to know, I just kind of drew that in there, that's the angle we're looking for. And again, this is a right triangle here. So it's saying, what's the sine of angle X? So if you remember from yesterday, we talked about the sine being the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse. So if we look here, we can see if you if you start at x, the sine of x, I should say, I should just add that in, <laughs> sine of x is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So starting at x, we have to go opposite, go to the opposite side, which is 50, over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 125 feet. Okay? And what you can do here is just reduce that fraction. So I can divide both of those by 25. And I get uh, 50 divided by 25 is 2. 125 divided by 25 is 5. So that's the final reduced fraction for that. <clears throat> so now, what's the measure of the angle? So we didn't really know the measure of the angle yet. We don't know what it is. We know this one's 90, but we really don't know what this one is. So we can uh, use the calculator to figure that out. So we, if we do the inverse sign, then we'll get it. So if, normally, like I said, if, if the sine of x equals 2 fifths, then what I can do is do the inverse sine of x. To get x by itself, I have to undo the sign, which is the inverse sign. So x equals the inverse sign of two-fifths. Okay, so if I go on my calculator here, all right, I can press the inverse sign. That's what that looks like. It's, um, if you can see it, it is a, um, a sign with a little negative one, and then I put two divided by five, and I get 578, but we can say 23.6 if we want to. So 23.6 degrees is what we have here. So x equals 23.6 degrees. Alright. Alright, so then it says, uh, what is the measure of the angle complementary to that? Well, if you remember, complement means they add up to 90. So if I do 90 minus 23.6, I'm going to get my answer, okay? So 90 minus 23.6 is 66.4. So that's my complement, my complementary angle. So it says here, um, what's the cosine of the angle complementary to angle X? Okay, so yesterday, remember, we talked about that. If you know that the sine of x is 2 fifths, then what's the cosine of the angle complementary to that? It should still be the same. It should still be 2 fifths. So that's the answer for that one. And remember, the reason we know that is because if we say the sine of, um, remember, x would be equal to the cosine of 90 minus x. And remember, we just, um, we know the sine of x is 2 fifths. 
and they just asked us for the complementary angle to that, which is 66.4. And then they said, um, what's the cosine of the angle complementary to x? So again, they're saying, the, what's the cosine of 66.4? Well, it should be equal to the sine of x, which is 2 fifths. Okay? And then this is the same um, answer that we had for yesterday. How, um, how do you explain the relationship between the sine and the cosine of complementary angles? So again, you can say the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement and vice versa. Okay? So that's all you have to do for that worksheet. In addition to that, you guys are going to be working on more with the sine, cosine, and tangent. <clears throat> so just want to go over sine, cosine, and tangent again with you. So again, the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine, so that's the C here, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and that's what that stands for. And tangent, with T, is opposite over adjacent. And you can use, member SOHCAHTOA to help you remember. Usually what I do is if I see a problem that involves um, the trig functions, I just write SOHCAHTOA automatically. And then I just try to figure out which ones I have. And that'll help me to know which um, trig function I need to use. So for the example here, um, we're going to do one that helps you with the ones down here. All they want you to do, it says in triangle ABC, where C is a right angle and AB is the hypotenuse, find the following values. So they want you to, they give you an example here as well, but I'll show you some more. So here's their example. The sine of angle A, we want to figure that out. So the sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, the so, right, for so Katoa. It's opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if we look back over here, you got to look at where angle A is, start there, and then think, okay, where's the opposite side? So if you go across the triangle, you see that BC is the opposite side. Okay, so that's why BC is on the top. And then AB is your hypotenuse, so that's why AB is on the bottom. And they're just labeling it as side BC over side AB. Okay, so now I'm going to do a couple more examples, and then that way you can fill out the rest on the bottom. So let's find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle D. All right, now angle F is a right triangle, or it's a right angle, I should say. So you don't need to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of those. You could just find you know, either D or E. <clears throat> so we're going to do D. So, so remember, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I look at this opposite side, if I go across, that's EF. EF. So I'd put that EF over the hypotenuse, remember, is the longest side, that's ED or DE. If you want to go alphabetical order, let's say DE. Okay, so D, E. So that's all I have to put for the sine of D. Um, if I actually had numbers here, I'd put those, but since I don't have numbers on these, I'm just going to write, um, you know, the sides written with letters. So now cosine of D. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what the AH stands for. So let's look at D. So start here. Now look at the side that is adjacent. Adjacent means next to, but not the hypotenuse. So if you look at angle D, there's two sides attached to it. There's this one and this one. But this one is the hypotenuse, so you don't want to use that one. We want to use this one. So DF, that's the adjacent side. So we're going to say DF over the hypotenuse, which is DE. All right, and then the final one, tangent of D. Again, start where D is. At whatever that angle is, you need to start there. 
So we need the opposite over the adjacent. So we're going to start at D and go opposite is EF. And then now instead of the hypotenuse, we, we need the adjacent. So the adjacent side that's not the hypotenuse, right, is DF. Okay, if you're starting here, right, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent over here. This is the adjacent side to D. So DF. And that's all you have to do for these. So now what you're going to do, just using different letters basically, you're going to come down here and you're going to look at um, the sine, cosine, and tangent of A. They've already done the sine of A for you. So start here and figure out what the cosine and tangent are. And then you're going to start up here for these three. Start up here and figure out what is the sine, cosine, and tangent.